guys, welcome. This is a general reading for the collective of Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Guys, this is a date and time specific re reading. Um, this whole series has been, as will the next series, because we have two major planetary transits occurring. We have Saturn moved into Pisces on March 7th, right after the full moon in Virgo. And then on uh, March 23rd, we have Pluto moving out of Capricorn and into Aquarius. So whenever these larger outer planets change signs because they move so slowly, it's quite impactful, especially just before, during, and just after they move signs. But um, Saturn will be with us in Pisces for two and a half to three, like th into 2026. Sometimes it's a little, you know, longer than usual because of retrogrades. Um, but it takes him about 30 years to get around the whole zodiac. So it's been a hot minute since we've seen Saturn and Pisces. If you were born in the 1960s, you probably can look back 30 years or so to 1994 approximately um, and recall what was going down in your life um, at that time. I know what was going on in mine. So that's what we're looking at. So let me tell you briefly the, the, the Pisces themes and the Saturnian archetypes. So we have Pisces last sign of the zodiac about completion about transitioning about releasing letting go of things we don't want to carry forward or shouldn't carry forward into our next highest timeline and or the new astrological year we've got saturn which is the great teacher um the timekeeper um yeah it's it's a little bit more about boundaries and discipline and limits and restrictions and lessons and reckonings it's not comfortable energy in pisces pisces is we're all one and it's all forgiveness and sometimes saturn's like like hell no there are limits to this and so two words that i think sum up saturn and pisces in general is spiritual discipline so that's helpful for us um but when it comes to relationships it's about boundaries and forgiveness Okay, so let's jump in and see where this takes us. So you can be here as a cross watcher, that's fine. Ooh, look at this. The overall energy, eight of wands. So there's something here about communication, a passionate exchange. Uh, the first row is going to be, you know, what Pisces is encouraging you to release. And then the second row is the Saturnian influence lessons that may pop up um and this oh i like this your um, third row here is about your next highest timeline and what i mean by that specifically is once you learn the lessons you sh you're not doomed to repeat them you learn them saturn says good job gives you the reward and then we have ascension we have growth spiritual growth and ascension is what i'm really referring to so um here up in pisces land we've got some literal pisces energy we have the nine of swords the knight of cups is pisces and we've got the king of cups and this duo has been showing up in i think you're like the third reading that has this knight of cups king of cups um dynamic meaning all the worry that you've been holding with regard to the vision you have, I, I think I even said this, gosh, I wanna say it was for Virgo. People were not happy, I'll say that. The vision you have of how things should be versus how things really are. And the desire for something more romantic, more flowery, more, you know, roses and emotive emotional cards and you know and the sentiment of it all that comes with the knight of cups versus the king of cups who by the way feels things deeply but just isn't as flowery about it the knight the, I mean, the king of cups is deep it's scorpionic energy i love that we have saturn there in the background of the king of cups so there's an energy here of 
depth of emotion. It's also about emotional availability and or the lack thereof. Emotional integrity and or the lack thereof. So I feel Pisces is saying, stop worrying. Stop worrying and don't put so much emphasis on the romantic side, the romance of it all, if what you really want is someone who shows up for you and has your back and reciprocates in the connection and shows you this is, if you are dealing with a Virgo, please watch that reading because I've got Virgo here in the Hermit and here in the Nine of Pentacles and I'm feeling like it's almost all the same cards because that was here too. If what you really want is someone who shows you how they care. It may not come out in the flowery, lilting, whisper sweet, nothing's in your ear kind of a way, but the Six of Pentacles, now we're in Saturn's row here, saying this is what the, you know, the lesson you're going to be learning about is choosing the path towards something more reciprocal instead of something more romantic. An equal partner, equal give and take. And then we have the four of pentacles and that's boundaries. So every time Mr. Knight of Cups <laughs> comes in, I love you so much, Capricorn. You're going to, I'm feeling a little, a little goofy. Every time Mr. Knight of Cups here like <laughs> shows up and doesn't have the flowers, but fixes <laughs> your broken, <laughs> um, you know, name the, name the appliance, right? <laughs> Whatever it is. Changes the light bulb that's too high for you to reach. Brings the groceries in from the car. Do you see what I'm saying? It's like, that's the boundaries that Saturn's going to draw your attention to. And it does represent a choice, a path. Knowing what you want and then determining which path will get you there and then what do you need to set in action, um, right? To make it happen, to have it arrive. The next card from the two of wands would be the three of wands, which is ships coming in. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I love you guys. So your next highest timeline. Yeah, it's about the future, 10 of pentacles, life partnership, abundance, legacy, the life you're building. And then we have two Virgo cards. We have the Hermit and we have the Nine of Pentacles. And to me, the Hermit is like the guide. It's your inner guide. It is the part of you that really takes the time to lift the hood of the car of your life and look at the engine and say, what is going on here? It's about introspection, self-awareness, personal growth. Um, it can be a solitary journey. I'm going to say that. So, and because the nine of pentacles comes right after, and she is the single person in the tarot, um, there's a possibility that your next highest timeline in, involves more time spent on yourself. Um, and what kind of a future you do want, what kind of a life partner you do want, what the future looks like for you. Um, so there's a little bit of that. Now let's just jump in and clarify. <laughs> Sorry, I'm still giggling at myself. <sighs> Eight of Wands. There's that Three of Wands. Okay. Um, I feel you're living in fear of a conversation that says, we're done. No more feel you're living in fear of it because the cards I pull from the bottom of the deck for those of you who are new is your unconscious awareness it's what's in your psyche that kind of rises up and even though it's not something right here in front of our face it does prompt us to behave in certain ways right um I just feel with the three of wands and the eight of cups. It's like you're afraid that the conversation that's about to take place is one of goodbyes.
And then we have the Nine of Swords with the Knight of Cups. So I'm going to look at the Nine of Swords by itself. Two of Swords, Lovers, right. There is something you need to offload here about this connection. Unburden yourself. This is a crossroads moment. Two of Swords. We have the Lovers, Ten of Wands underneath. This is about unburdening yourself of the worry, of the preoccupation with the situation um, that you may or may not be able to do much about. The Two of Swords is saying this is the moment of choice. This calls you to make an important decision. And the Lover's card says, and it's all in your hands. The choice is yours. How do you want to proceed? And now I'm going to look at the Knight of Cups with the King of Cups. There's something here. <laughs> so the conversation that you fear is already um, showing up here with the Pisces energy of what need. You're just going to have to take a chance. I feel like um, the Queen of Swords that comes through right here is taking it in a, like there's gotta be a, a dispassionate approach here, um, Capricorn or whoever you are watching. That queen of swords is a truth seeker and a truth teller. And I feel like the, the, the conversation, if there was one on your end would be a little bit like, are you in or are you out? Right? Like, are you gonna take a chance and kind of wanting that more poetic romantic response but you're might be dealing more with a king of cups who is not as expressive and like i think i said earlier not for the lack of deep feeling but that is a notorious aspect of the king of cups is a challenge around communicating the feelings so i feel like pisces is saying you're just going to have to be dispassionate about this um, any communication will have to be direct, just like on a fact-finding mission. Um, and be prepared to let go of the anxiety of it all, um, what's weighing you down and doesn't, you know, and it is burdening you, boom. No, make your choice. And then if the conversation happens, don't live in fear of it. You now have a better handle on how to approach it which is more the queen of swords, truth seeker, truth teller. I'm just here to figure out where, where we stand. I like that. Six of pentacles, two of wands. Saturn comes in. Yes. Wow. Well, I love that we have the queen of pentacles underneath because Saturn says, remember, if you want, life partnership then that's the energy you have to come from and that's very stable and grounded this is capricorn it's a card of capricorn the queens are cardinal energy cardinal the cardinal signs aries capricorn libra cancer so um i feel like this is really powerful because um saturn's telling you there is a way forward so that you don't always have to be feeling hurt or suffer heartache it's about presenting from that part of you that is feeling very much on solid ground as it is right from jump meaning you don't need someone you'd like someone you'd like a life partner wouldn't we all but you know i'm doing fine for myself that's part of why this nine of pentacles is here she's like a proto type to the queen of pentacles and I'm feeling like if you want a relationship that's more reciprocal, um, that Queen of Pentacles energy is where you spend time on yourself, on your own um, self-care, what makes you feel grounded, so that as you choose the path forward, you're doing so from a position of strength and grounded energy. And a not needing, but maybe a wanting. What do I want? Asks the Two of Wands. What do I want? Well, certainly not heartache in relationships over and over and over again. I want something more reciprocal. 
okay. Um, and maybe that means it's a little more practical. Okay. And so focusing on your own grounding in this particular part of the reading is important because it's going to help you forge that path forward. And then we look here at the Four of Pentacles, which to me is coming through as boundaries. Mm -hmm. Four of Wands, Queen of Wands, and Justice. So this part is reward. Just, I didn't mention it, by the way, but I'm going to mention it now. Saturn wants to reward us for a job well done or for the growth or for, you know, when Saturn sees, well, this person really learned a lesson, really got it and changed as a result or made different choices as a result. Two of swords, two of wands, uh, lovers, all those are cards of choice and two of cups even. All the twos are cards of choice then there's a reward structure and I'm feeling like better boundaries brings a happier connection. You're in your power. There's the queen of wands, um, feeling empowered, feeling your personal sense of magical, mystical energy. And it brings in a lot of balance and harmony with justice underneath. So I kind of feel like you get it. In this particular transit, you sort of are like, yeah, done with the heartache, done with the anxiety. I'm not going to live in fear of this conversation. I now have a clearer idea of how to be in communication about this, meaning Queen of Swords. I'm just on a fact-finding mission. Um, it won't matter really the way the person expresses their feelings. It will be you know, what those feelings truly are. And if they're invested in this connection, then we have a path forward. And if they're not, I will revamp my boundary structure so that I'm the one running the show. And that it's on my terms. And I don't mean that in, an, in a nasty sense. I, I really don't. I mean that in terms of instead of being the one who feels at the mercy of someone else's feelings and expression of them or lack thereof, you set the tone going forward. That's all I mean by that. So I have to be, <laughs> to be careful. Um, so now let's look at this Ten of Pentacles. In your next highest timeline, there's a lot of healing here from, um, wow, I feel like with that seven of swords there, there's been definitely some energy of feeling betrayed, shafted. Um, I'm feeling like someone sold you a bill of goods. And it didn't come to pass. And so part of your next highest timeline is about healing that. So that you don't take that energy of lack of trust and hold it against someone else. Um, or even against this, if it happens to be this person that you're here watching about. I mean, this is temperances. All in time, all energies come into flow and balance. So be patient and exercise self-control and restraint. You can transmute this energy of a lack of trust into something that's more healing and deep and reflective. And I feel like somehow you have gotten very disappointed because you had a vision of the future. That's what I was talking about with the Knight of Cups, King of Cups. It's the vision that we hold of how you know a, a grand love affair should be what it should look like what it should lead to and then we feel betrayed when it doesn't materialize in that way so i feel like there will be healing around that um for sure and some transmutation of those difficult energies and then let's look at the hermit and the nine of pentacles Four of Pentacles again, Knight of Swords, and the Strength card. So yeah, I feel like part of your self-exploration here, 
your inner guide will guide you to that construct of boundaries without blocking your heart chakra. So this be, we have to be careful with the four of pentacles because sometimes that center pentacle will block the heart chakra. So this isn't about blockage. It's about understanding where our boundaries are a little mucky. That's part of the whole Pisces, Capricorn, uh, Saturn and Pisces theme and about being very clear, speaking up for ourselves, speaking truth to power, making sure we're understood, clearing up misunderstandings, overcoming misunderstandings, being confident and courageous. And again, not needing anyone, but wanting someone is okay. The Nine of Pentacles finds us as um, independent and autonomous in this game of life with improved boundaries, a voice to speak, um, what our needs are, and the confidence to overcome any obstacles or challenges. So your next highest timeline looks interesting. Um, it looks like some hurts get resolved, some boundaries get improved just by your own self-exploration, um, some fears and anxieties about communication with someone who has disappointed you. I feel like that gets resolved too. And if it doesn't get resolved, remember that another archetype of Pisces is dissolved. So if you don't get to have the conversation, all the energy may just dissolve. It isn't worth carrying forward. What will go forward with you is what you your own personal journey um, to understand yourself better so that it doesn't ever have to happen again, right? Okay, so before I give you the astrology of what shows up here, there is a link in the description box below that will take you to the extended. And we're gonna look at this person, this Knight of Cups, King of Cups person that has caused you so, um, so much um, heartache and worry. Uh, we're going to look at their Saturn and Pisces experience. The only difference is the last row will not be their next highest timeline. It will be their intentions toward you and or the connection going forward, which will impact this timeline. So that's what the link's in the first sentence in the description box. So let me tell you who shows up. Pisces in the moon. Um, we have Gemini in the lover's. We've got Pisces in the Knight of Cups. Queen of Swords is Libra. The Fool is Aquarius. King of Cups is Scorpio. Um, Queen of Pentacles, as I said, is Capricorn. Queen of Wands is Aries. Libra in the Justice card. We've got Sagittarius in the Temperance card. Hermit and Nine of Pentacles are both Virgo. And we've got... Um, more Gemini here in the Knight of Swords and Leo in the Strength card. So all in all, a pretty intense reading for you, Capricorn. Um, or if you're here as a cross watcher, you, the whole thing may be reversed. Um, but I feel like there's a lot of growth you can ex expect during this transit. And that's the most important thing. So the link to the extended is below. I'll see you there in a second. Otherwise, bye for now.